Hi, and welcome to my channel. This is Louise speaking, and today I'm gonna be showing you how I converted my 3D printer from a 2K to a 4K screen resolution, allowing me now to print three times faster, and of course, with even more details. So before we start, I would like to um, ask you to subscribe to my channel, give it a like, and add a comment to engage because this is really gonna help the channel and you know I just took the effort to come here and share the knowledge with you you know I could have kept with myself um, so yeah I would really appreciate if you do so so first of all why have I done that the reasons are quite obvious right um, I'm upgrading the printer from one thing to a better thing but the thing is if you take a look at my first video in this channel that's when I bought this printer it cost around a thousand euros and shortly after, as I was expecting, the Saturn uh, Model to Photo Mono X came by and the price of this printer dropped from 1000 euros to merely 400 euros. In the meantime, I also got a Photo Mono X and I saw how good it is if compared to this printer. It was really hard to come back to this one. And on top of that, the LCD of this printer started to go bad and that means that I would have to buy a new one. And then um, in my first video, I got some comments asking how it was the experience ever after a few months using it. And I noticed if compared to the Photo Mono X that the fans of this printer are turned on all the time. So it's really loud, even when it's not printing. Also, you cannot mute it. So the beeping before and after um, printing is really loud and the, the frozen firmware doesn't allow you to turn it off or to make it mute and of course this is a rgb lcd screen which is like really slow based on that i just wanted to i just thought like okay i'm only using the photo mono x now and i i have everything here right the chassis the um the fans the led bed why can't i just change the screen to a better one and that's when I started to research and I thought it, was, it would be much harder to do so. And I just started looking at Cheeto and Cheeto Systems actually manufactures a similar board, actually it's the same. Um, uh, they they manuf just manufactured the original board of this printer and they sell a separate one which supports 4K and also just supports all the other components. So the only thing I needed was to pay for a new 4K screen, which I would have to spend the money anyways, uh, close to 100 euros for RGB one. And for this one, I paid 120 euros. Um, and then I bought a new board, which I paid around 100 euros. So for 220 euros, I was able to convert or upgrade this printer to a 4K one. What forced me to do that is that before I asked Frozen to see if there was like any upgrade I could do. And first of all, they didn't have, uh, they didn't offer any upgrade for this model. So ju they just said, yeah, we cannot do anything. And second, they do offer an upgrade for the Shuffle XL, regular one, not the light version. And it costs ridiculously 600 euros. Like, no, even if they had for this printer, I wouldn't pay this price. Come on, you can buy a new photo Mono X for that price, right? And you're just paying for a new screen. So they kind of forced me to do that. And then I just went ahead and I just got on, on the Cheeto website. And the only thing I had to do later was to configure some parameters to work um, with that. And that was it. It just works. And I'm here to show you how I did it. So let's go for it. I just wanted to make it clear that if you do any modifications to your printer, it's your own responsibility. So do it at your own risk. Be careful and good luck. So guys, what I got from Cheeto here is a new touch screen, uh, which means that it should be a compatible one for the new board. Then of course I got a new motherboard which is similar to the one I had. Um, I just you just need to check for your connections and so on. And it just works out of the box literally with the new 4K screen that I got from Cheeto Systems. So here it is, isn't the cable? And let's try it out. 
So the first thing you want to do is to disassemble your printer and of course you can just record a video to see where which screw was before so you don't get lost when you're gonna assemble it back and uh, yeah then you need to find the space to put the board just check of course if your printer has space for one if not I wouldn't recommend to proceed further so the first thing you're gonna do when once you're inside is to remove your old main board and uh, put your new one and in case you have a completely different system I would recommend to double check before but it shouldn't be a big deal since you will have an input for a stepper motor and for the LED bed and all these things are um, documented on Cheeto uh, manual so you can just take a look and connect everything inside in my case everything was pretty much similar so I just had to disconnect from the old one and put into the new one the next you will want to connect your touch screen and be very careful here since these FFC cables are quite delicate so just do it with some love and it should be fine so then the next step is to replace your old 2k screen with a new 4k screen which in my case was slightly bigger in size literally on length and width so um, it as you can see in the image it was a bit thicker so to say because it didn't fit but in the end we can just configure the Z stop later, the Z limit and it should also be fine and if you look well you can see that the glass, the back glass was also a bit smaller so I bet so far no uh, drawbacks on that, everything is working as it should. Yet another adjustment I had to do was to offset a bit of this metal part which uh, sends a signal and uh, to the Z limit sensor so I had to, because of this uh, thick screen and also I install a flex build plate, um, I had to make it slightly uh, more to the bottom than it was before. I just used a small piece of plastic to do so, so it works quite well. So enough for adjustments, the next step was to turn it on and test if everything is working as it should. I just tested the screen first and it was working. But when I was testing the motors, when I clicked up, it was going down, so it was inverted. And that leads us to the next step, which is to adjust the parameters. Oh yeah, and just before I forget, another adjustment I did was just to... And this particular printer, uh, one of the fans was connected directly to the power source. So I just cut the wires and connected to the input of the mainboard fan, which now allows me to control it and turn it on and off whenever I want depending on the parameters so let's go for the parameters now so in order to get the parameters file you go to cheetosystem.com click on support and download and there they're gonna have the parameter file just go ahead and make sure you download the one for the MLSA printer um, it's gonna go to Dropbox you just click direct download and then we are ready to open it in your favorite code or text editor it can be notepad and here I'm just using VS code but it's just my preference and then we're gonna go to um, line 42 and here is just optional the next two lines are just optional is just to make sure that we have the room settings turned on to make the print faster uh, but it's completely up to you I'm just changing it to four uh, uh, millimeters per second and yeah just to make the best out of the print next line is going to be 55 where you can have to update to the maximum z in millimeters so for the shuffle xl light it's 200 millimeters or 20 centimeters and you just adjust it accordingly then the line 60 is just about the sensor the z limit sensor it's just one sided i'm not using two of them nor a bilateral one so just change it to zero here then line 77 um, here is just something I fine-tuned when I was playing with it but just for the shuffle XL light we just want to make sure that it stays in the limit position and doesn't go back to the zero position um, this one also optional exclusive to the shuffle XL light um, is what I mentioned that the ventilation fan was always turned on here we connect it now to the new main board and we want to make sure that it's uh, only one while it's printing. 
and the last configuration then is here and we're gonna change it to um, i0 instead of i1 uh, because we want that the limit position is the same as the zero point of z and not that is different from the zero point of z so we just change it to i0 and just save the file to your usb stick plug it in oops you always have 50 percent of chance to plug it correctly then um yeah uh, go to print you're gonna find the g-code file there and just click print as any other regular print it's gonna literally do one second and it's done it's already upgraded your parameters then as for slicing and printing you're gonna open chidu or any software that you use to slice and there you're gonna select your original printer and we just need to change now the resolution of the screen so I'm just copy whatever Mono X has because this is originally a setup for it. So I just double it. Um, don't forget to uh, first turn off the lock ratio checkbox so you can change it without changing the size. And then you turn it on again. And just here as optionally, I'm gonna turn, uh, make it faster for the lifting and retract speed and of course the exposure time. So now we have, you can just slice and we have just like a photo mono x printer and here cheetah says 28 minutes but it took around 45 minutes to print and as for the results you can see that it looks quite sharp and clean i just made sure to uh, print one of those amerilabs uh, test files into every corner of the build plate and yeah i'm quite satisfied with the results So yeah, for this video, it was pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you liked it, consider giving uh, a like below and also subscribing. And if you have any questions or anything, just drop a comment. I would be happy to answer them. So see you guys next time.